that you should be a better basketball player. And it's unfortunate, but I think the best case scenario for the Sixers is that Ben Simmons. I mean, okay, let's get this out of the way. The best case scenario for the Sixers is that the Portland Trailblazers are like, hey, uh, you know what? That uh, Damian Lillard fellow wants to get the hell out of here. So what are you willing to give us for him? And the Sixers are like, open cupboard. What would you like? Everything not named Joel. Take it. That, that would be the best case scenario. I don't see that happening at this point in time. I don't see that happening right now. But it could happen. And the odds are better that it, that it happens if Ben Simmons does come back. If Ben Simmons does play the good boy scout and he does come in for training camp and he does come in for the preseason and he does play uh, maybe the first half of the season, or maybe it's like a a, a Jimmy Butler type trade where you see him traded by November, for instance, maybe that's what happens, but that is the best possible route. This is the best possible way this whole scenario can play out is for Ben Simmons to come back and play. Show how good a player he can be because we all know what type of regular season basketball player Ben Simmons is. And then GMs around the league go, oh, okay, all right, he's got that. He's Maybe he's shooting a little bit. Maybe he's showing that he's expanded this game. And you know what? Maybe over the course of a couple of games, they start to mend fences between him and Joel Embiid and Doc Rivers for things that were said after the game. And that's one of the great points that Tom Moore is going to make uh, when he comes on with us a little bit later. But that's the best case scenario for the Sixers. That's the way they obtain their next best case scenario. So first thing that needs to happen is Ben Simmons needs to come back. As much as I don't want to see him in a Sixers uniform, if it helps him ultimately get top dollar back for his trade, then absolutely he's got to come back. He's got to play. He's got to play the the, the good little boy uh, type thing. And then he's got to actually play well. And then they trade him for top dollar as opposed to uh, pennies on the dollar as the expression goes. I, I, I hate all the drama that surrounds this. I, I it all it's so crazy to me that all this stems from a basketball player that is not willing to shoot. He's apparently willing to work on it in the off season, but he's not willing to apply it in the regular season. Here's the perfect scenario. The perfect scenario is Ben Simmons comes back and Ben Simmons expands his game. I have no doubt in my mind mind, that if Ben Simmons plays in the playoffs with an expanded game, 10-foot jumper, 15-foot jumper, hits his free throws, the Sixers, is there any doubt that the Sixers are at least in the Eastern Conference Finals? Is there any doubt if Ben Simmons is a good free throw shooter and a willing participant in shooting the basketball from 10 feet away from the basket? Or, or, hold on, hold on, wait, don't, don't, I don't, don't, you might think I'm crazy, or... Maybe one inch from the basket and dunks the basketball. Is it like? Is like, like because the reason he's not doing that is because he's afraid of the other. He's afraid of shooting free throws. So if he's a good free throw shooter, that means he can more be he can be more aggressive the, around the rim. And if he's a good free throw shooter, anyone who plays basketball knows that a free throw is the essence of a jump shot because it's all the same form. So if you can go out there and hit your free throws, that means it's going to translate over into your jump shooting. So hey, it, it all comes down to just hit your free throws, man, and everything else will fall into place. If he does that, if he comes in next year, the best case scenario, he comes in next year with that expanded game, with good free throw shooting ability, and then the Sixers maybe in Joel Embiid with his charming self, maybe he can smooth things over for saying that Ben not dunking the basketball was the turning point in the game. Maybe Doc Rivers can smooth things over, as we pointed out before, when he talks about how uh, Ben Simmons, uh, he's not sure if Ben Simmons is the type of point guard you can win a championship with. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like Maybe that's the type of thing. Maybe that's the type of thing that we'll see when we come into next year. Uh, when I say next year, I mean like two weeks. So uh, that's the perfect scenario. The, 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 more, the more likely scenario is that uh, Ben Simmons is a big fat baby and doesn't show up, makes this really hard on the Sixers, and then the Sixers ended up training, end up training Ben Simmons uh, you know, for a bottom-tier guy. Not, not Dame Lillard, in other words. Maybe that's where they start thinking about draft picks. But I think if you go back to uh, – this tweet again from uh, Tom Moore. And you see right there at Tom Moore, Philly. Uh, Here's what you see. Uh, They're not willing right at the bottom there. Don't plan on a deal that would drop them back in the standings. You know what that means? That means don't waste Joel Embiid's time in the NBA because his time is very precious. (laughs) 